Is a calculator smarter than a human? No. No. A calculator isn't. But here's where. Wait, AI, isn't it? No. Not really. But it, it, for, for mathematical equations? Yes. Yes. You can argue for it. But then, but then a human has made that calculator. Yeah. yeah. So but, te- technically, a calculator isn't smarter than a human, or is yeah. it? But here's the, here's, the, here's the danger with AI, though. Because a lot of this is uh, like generative AI, whatever. Did you leave your job completely, mm-hmm. meaning that you wasn't doing part time and started working on your business, or did you sever ties with your job completely and start running your marketing business? So I, I would say for two years, I was doing both. You was doing both? Yeah. Okay. And and how many hours, so how many hours were you doing work-wise mm-hmm. and how many hours were you working on your, I know you can't give me a rough figure, sure. but how many hours were you doing work-wise? You should be able to give me a figure for that, as yeah. in the actual job. How many hours so were you doing there? So that would have been full-time, so that would have been Monday to Friday, so that's like 39 hours, like so nine, eight, nine, hours. nine to five, yeah. And how many hours would you say, I know it, it could vary one week and the other, but roughly how many hours would you say you was working on your digital marketing business? I would say probably, the same. So I was probably doing 80 hour. 80 hour weeks. Yeah. Okay. And um, what point was you convinced that it's now time to leave my job completely? So when did you actually leave your job completely where you stopped receiving a paycheck from your job? So my last day was the 15th of October, 2019. Okay. Um, there was two things for me. So mm-hmm. before I left, I wanted to make sure like okay, we had some savings. Okay. And how many, how, how many months of emergency fund would you say you had? So don't give me the figure, but how many yeah. months in your head would you say that I've yeah. saved this amount that even if I, worst case scenario, I can pay my my needs mm-hmm. for the next how many months? Yeah, it was um, six months. Six months. You had so you, you had six months of a cushion in your head yeah. saying, look, I've got six months here to make this business work. Yeah. And how much, if you can give me a figure, um, was you, by the time you had left your, your, your job mm-hmm. and you started going to digital marketing full time, mm-hmm. was you making more than 3,000 pounds a month profit from your digital marketing company? before uh, you decided free. to leave so i mean when you decided to walk out of your, your job yeah was you making up to three thousand pounds a month profit for yourself in your digital marketing company uh profit well so I'll, I'll tell you kind of how to sort of explain it so i was i probably was on without giving too much away i was no, don't tell me about your job yeah i don't want about your day job okay, talking okay. about the digital the, the business okay yeah so i was pro i wasn't i don't think I was, no i wasn't making three thousand pounds profit okay so what gave you because a lot of people who watch this show or some yeah. people who want to get into business yeah so i'm saying now you've decided to leave your job with what you was earning yeah i'm going to assume can we say that you was earning more than 3k a month at your job oh yeah, yeah. okay so let's so we just leave it at 3k so 3k was what you was earning this even though it was more we just keep it at 3k sure. so you're earning 3k in your day job yeah you then decided to leave your day job but you've got a cushion of six months yeah and you've now decided that i'm going to take this on full time yeah okay bearing in mind you're not making as much as you're making in your day job yet in the marketing yeah so w- what gave you that confidence to say because you, you, you had a partner then yeah i was married yeah so you're and i had a two-year-old so you're married now and, so, and you're married yeah and you're deciding to tell your wife that look <laughs> i know you know uh, our boss is paying me this amount of work but this thing that i've realized is going to work i want to come out of my job mm-hmm. and um I want to leave it and now do this. How was you able to convince your wife and convince yourself that this was the right move? And, yeah. and let the, the viewers know that mm-hmm. in your head, how you decided that this makes sense. Because a lot of people want to leave their jobs. Yeah. But it's that leap of faith and 100%. when to take the leap of faith. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, there's a few things I had to my advantage. So while I was in my career, we are actually moved in with my, so we, we had one bed flat, we mm-hmm. sold it. I moved in with my mother-in-law. Okay. So that's one thing I think that not everybody has that. Yeah, that's that's has a, that option. That's a scary leap. Boy, right? yeah, 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 boy, yeah, yo, yeah. you're a big risk taker. You are. You got big kahunas. Of course. I would, I would, I would, you that. I would do that, boy. I was, I was scared. So wowzers. So, so that's the thing, though. But for me, it's like, like obviously, you give her curfew. Me, huh? You should give her curfew. <laughs> Mate. But see, we have to be in by nine o'clock. Okay, auntie. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, mommy. So, but I, I see that as an unfair advantage, and like, without sharing too much, I know a few like people. Like friends of mine who've had to make that decision on like okay this is costing us a lot mm-hmm. mumsy or pops has mm-hmm. an extra bedroom let's mm-hmm. move in so i was fortunate so that's something i just want to mm-hmm. put out there so i was fortunate that my mother- how did you look how did you negotiate that as a man i know we're deviating but how did you negotiate that where you're saying hmm this makes sense for me to move into my mother-in-law's i'm gonna do it. how did you negotiate that and how did your ego and your pride and and how did you allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to go yeah. into that space so i think for me it's like i, I very like good self-awareness in it mm-hmm. in a sense that look I've always, I'm always going to make the decision that's best for me and my family mm-hmm. so obviously we were living in a one bed flat uh, my wife was pregnant 
we knew we couldn't really raise the child in a one bed flat mm -hmm. so we sold it moved in with my mother-in-law so she was able to look after our daughter for, mm -hmm. for two years my daughter didn't need to go nursery mm -hmm. so for us we sat down as a family and broke down that okay what are the costs of having a child mm -hmm. nursery all of these different mm -hmm. things and she she's the one who proposed it she was like like we we previously stayed you know you go you stay there over a weekend and yeah, yeah. some weekends you stay longer like we had a good relationship mm -hmm. so she actually proposed it to us and we looked at the numbers and i said look babe let's do it mm -hmm. so i already had three years living with my mother-in-law where i was able to save up some money that's mm -hmm. how i was able to save it, six months okay. or whatever and in my career fortunately i was doing quite well so i got mm -hmm. promoted three times and i was okay. quite senior but to your point bro like i'll be 100 percent honest it took me longer than i should have like i've had this business idea for years mm -hmm. so i had to build up my confidence as well to mm -hmm. actually do it and my wife was very supportive she's more on like she's more of a risk taker than i am i'm yeah. more analytical and whatever mm -hmm. so she was fully supportive on that the reason why i left were well, two things one i had, I had a few mentors so I, my brother eugene you, mm -hmm. you know eugene. eugene um eugene Aishi. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so um, he said to you call him to yeah, you want to get him on here? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna, yeah, he's yeah gonna you should, you should. Yeah, that would yeah, be sick. He's, yeah, he's very wise. So he was my mentor. So we grew up mm -hmm. like went to the same school with Tottenham. He's done very well for himself, yeah. and he was giving me the encouragement <laughs> of like, look, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Avocado. <laughs> <laughs> so he's giving me encouragement. He's like, look, and this is not this is one thing that I don't think we do enough as black men. Yeah, is is, is give that word of encouragement. There's only one word. He said, couple words that he said to me. Mm -hmm. He said, I believe in you. He said, he, he sent me a DM. I've actually got on my phone. I can show you. He's like, when are you gonna leave and start your own thing? Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm working on it. I've got a few clients over. And he's like, look, like I'm here. I believe in you. Yeah. And I remember telling my missus that. <clears throat> she was like, rah, you've, had, you've, you've gained a certain level of confidence since that conversation. Yeah. And for me, it was like, hold on. He's doing very well in his business and he sees my potential. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need. Isn't yeah. it? That's all you need. So that coupled with the fact that I had a six months yeah. savings and I'm building up my clientele. The only, the last thing that made me sort of press the button was... I was getting a lot of DMs from recruiters. Yeah. And we've got a mutual friend that I just mentioned earlier. He yeah. worked in recruitment. Yeah, so yeah. I knew, worst case, if I needed a job, you I can call him, him. Yeah. he can yeah. sort me out. And he was doing digital marketing like as well. So mm -hmm. I kind of just had the right network and support system around me where it was like, it would be risky for me not to take the risk. I like that. Okay. It was it, a bigger it, risk not taking the risk. It was a bigger risk not to take the risk. So, okay. for, so for me, and I know like a lot of people are watching this, they may not have those things in place, mm -hmm. but I kind of, had a safety net mm -hmm. because and even when I left my job mm -hmm. for about a year and a half my manager was still calling me to see how things were going mm -hmm. so I knew if this didn't work I could yeah, always go back, go back. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say so but, my, my, pick, oh, sorry. my advice would be is like if you're in a job when I know this isn't the right time but when yeah. is the right time I know there isn't a right time there isn't I think but, okay well, when, when is a when is the wrong time that's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. When is the wrong time to leave your job and start your and start your own business? That's a better question. I think the wrong time is when you don't have customers already. Okay. So okay. for me, I I was like I said, I was I was matching half of my salary mm -hmm. with with uh, with you yeah. Know, so I was like, well, if I just flipped, if I put more hours into this, mm -hmm. I can definitely match my salary in the next three months, mm -hmm. right? So that was my thinking around it. So I think the, the wrong time is to leave is when we don't have customers and here's my point as well i actually think working in a job is the best yes it is best tuition yeah. like every, every, i think it's the best in general if, the, you, if you get on and yeah. you can get paid enough yeah on like, someone else's dime as well yes like i was being paid to learn i already had intentions that i was going to build my digital marketing mm -hmm. thing but i never gave that company less that's another thing okay sometimes people give the company less because your mind is somewhere else yep. so for me it was like Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that if this didn't work out, I can always go back. So I, 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 yeah. I made sure that I, I, I had a good track record. But what one thing I also did was, so I used to do marketing, but I went into data. So okay. the second half of my career, I went into data. The reason I went into data, like I mentioned earlier, digital marketing is all about analytics, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I read an article somewhere, some senior member of like Google said, being a, going into data is like, it's the foolproof career thing mm -hmm. to okay. do. So I went into data, I worked for the British Medical Journal. My manager was really supportive. And I was fortunate because he, like that company, they told me the three year plan. Okay. They were like, this is what we're trying to aim over three years. So what I did strategically was just make sure that any project that was linked to that, the, mm -hmm. those goals I was involved in. Okay. Right. So then, cause you know how it's working for companies, it's all about your, your profile within, when it comes to review, who's going to get promoted. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. I was very strategic in that sense. So to answer your question, I feel like, and it also ties into a lot of companies that come work with us. A lot of people come work with us, want to start an e-commerce business because they want to escape their job. Mm -hmm. And I always say like e-commerce is great in terms of generating revenue, mm -hmm. but it's never the most profitable. 
and it's well, not okay why do you say it's never the most profitable because that's a very profound statement why is it never the most profitable um, to what, in comparison to what in comparison to oh, that's a very good question in, in comparison to service-based business so okay. i make my profit margins would could be or in my industry could be anywhere between 50 to 80 percent okay because ultimately the only thing i need i mean i've got an office and a team mm -hmm. but worse she hits the fan mm -hmm. all i need is my laptop and internet true i can still run ads true mm -hmm. so i can have an 80 percent more if I'm, i can still charge the clients the same because yeah that, you know and I mean? have less overheads less mm -hmm. overheads whereas if i'm selling a product i gotta pay the manufacturer i gotta okay. pay you know what i'm saying okay but most people want to get into e-commerce because that's what's publicized like mm -hmm. they'll hear oh this black brand has done a million or whatever mm -hmm. and we jump with the turnover number mm -hmm. whereas it's like for me when i started at first year we did we we're doing five figures mm -hmm. like you know, we didn't hit six figures till the second year, and mm -hmm. and it's like it's a slow burner, mm -hmm. but and it's not fun for a lot of people because some people don't want to work, they don't want to be, they don't want to be working for another person because mm -hmm. technically I run an agency, I work for my clients. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So I had yeah. to like lower my working. ego. Yeah, you're still I'm working. still working. I'm still yeah. like, so I had to lower my ego because it's like you know some of these guys are younger than me, mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. 10, 15 years younger than me, yeah. um, and I'm working for them, but I see a bigger vision. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think there's an element of ego into it as well, but I feel like the best way for me is like if you're in a job <clears throat> if you can move if you can digitalize what you're doing in your current job mm -hmm. then it's usually almost like a foolproof way so for example if you are a, a lawyer mm -hmm. and this may be wrong because you may get done for it but let's pick another thing like, and let's say <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, you probably wouldn't should be practicing to, twice but okay mm -hmm. i'm a good example i was doing marketing Mm -hmm. and I had a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. now, if I worked in an agency, that would yeah. be a problem. Mm -hmm. But I was working in a, in a journalist company, they don't mm -hmm. really care. Mm -hmm. So, but the skills I'm learning here, I'm applying here. Transferable, yeah. They're transferable skills. And I just feel like, there's a lot of people in our community that don't like the jobs. And it's not just our community. A lot of people don't like the jobs they work at because they see it as a way to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can, try to figure out a way to get into an industry that you would actually enjoy, that would give you enough of a I guess endurance, endurance and fulfillment so that if the entrepreneurship doesn't work out, you go back to something that's decent. So for me, I actually, um, I actually went down. So I, I used to work for a, a bigger corporate, mm -hmm. even though I got, I was working in Watford mm -hmm. uh, and I moved to London. Obviously the salaries are better in London, mm -hmm. but I dropped the level. Okay. So to get into data, I had to start at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Whereas my marketing thing was moving, but like you know what I mean. So yeah, I was willing, good. I was willing to drop mm -hmm. and and climb again. So there's a lot of like things that I was able to do. Luckily, I had good mentors around mm -hmm. me and whatever. But to answer your question, I think the worst time is when you don't have customers. You gotta have customers ready. So I already had half, and I knew that, and I lived a modest life. So I knew that worst case, our bills will be covered by half of what I'm making. What you're making, okay. So um, in, but, in, but then hey, mm -hmm. crazy thing happened though when lockdown happened, which I'll tell you. In terms of scaling your business, mm -hmm. so what, what would you say were like your your highest leverage activities that you were doing on a daily basis that allowed you to scale. grow your business, like get buy back your time, but mm -hmm. then also make more profit? Yeah, so uh, very that's a very good question. So that's the biggest challenge with service based business because it, it, it's you're doing the job in it. You probably the same like PT, yeah. like you're actually having to go out and yeah. whereas I guess you've scaled it a bit more where you can do like the recorded. The pre-recorded stuff yeah the, on, the online stuff the online stuff yeah, yeah. so for me um i'm fortunate that i run ads on facebook is that it's a platform that is digital in it it's already built so i can just take on more clients and the, you know i can kind of do it that way they can scale so to answer your question hiring so eventually hiring like other freelancers mm -hmm. to grow so it means that we can take on more clients yeah but the challenge there also is that now you have overheads yeah right um, but I would say the biggest growth for my business was that WhatsApp group. Yeah. So what I realized about that WhatsApp group is that I had a community mm -hmm. and just by helping people in that WhatsApp group, I was building influence. Yeah. It's almost like you having a WhatsApp group where you're just giving people fitness tips. Someone's yeah. at the gym and said, oh, geez, what can I do? It's like, mm -hmm. do this. And you're, you're doing that in the comfort of your home. Yeah. So I was doing that and I had no intention to start an agency at that point. Mm -hmm. But when people started reaching out, because they saw I added, I gave so much value. Yeah. What I've got from there is the power of community. Kind of goes back to Gabe's question of like, what marketing is the best? We talked about channels in it. So it's like, you know, Facebook, whatever. But I also think there's like concepts of marketing, such as word of mouth, mm -hmm. yeah. community marketing. Yeah. These are all different. I think community marketing is the best form of marketing because it leverages word of mouth. Okay, yeah. So for example, a community marketing would be if, if I come into 
a community and I'm respected in that community mm-hmm. for a said thing, mm-hmm. I'm going to win. So, for example, if you were the best basketball player in Brixton, mm-hmm. like, whenever people in that area go out the area or hear about an opportunity, they're going to call you for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I had a reputation in, in North London as the digital marketing guy because I was, I was doing stuff okay. on the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how... So, my first business was actually um, Mixed Aid Madness. Okay. So, I did the digital marketing for Mixed Aid Madness. Okay. That came from uh, me doing my digital mark for another platform. So we, me and my female regents had a blog called um, Brothers With No Game. Oh, I, I remember, remember that. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so that was that. Yeah. 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 So, so I, but that was good because... And that was a web series as well. It was yeah. a web series, yeah. 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 So the good thing about that is that no one knew who we were. So mm-hmm. we, would, we was able to write um, mm-hmm. kind of a madness. But mm-hmm. what? that's how I learned digital marketing. So I actually mm-hmm. didn't... My first job, I didn't actually learn it in the job I was learning on the side. So to answer your question, that all goes back to community marketing because the moment my friends knew that I was behind this, mm-hmm. when they came up with a concept of Mixed Day Madness, like, bring Maz on. Yeah. yeah. And then with Mixed Day Madness, I grew that to like 30,000 subscribers mm-hmm. in, in 90 days when I learned SEO. Because mm-hmm. yeah. we had no money, we had to do it on the job. Okay. Now I've got a reputation from one postcode to actually North London. Yeah. So then when my brethren Andy, years later, he became an angel investor. So he started investing in tech companies. Mm-hmm. He had all these companies that he's funded mm-hmm. who are now looking for a marketing person. Yeah. He then is like, you need to speak to Maz. Of course, yeah. So the best form of marketing right now, what I do to answer your question, mm-hmm. is community. So we throw our own event. We do an annual event every year. Okay. And I also go speak at my friends' events. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of my friends have like business events. I'll go mm-hmm. speak and, and give knowledge. And that's where people will reach out to me after. Mm-hmm. Like, I heard you speak, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? So I would mm-hmm. say the fastest way to grow a business is... Uh, become a key person of influence. So there's a book called um, Key Person of Influence by a guy called Daniel Priestley. Okay. Best, one of the best business books I ever read. And all he said in that book is like, pick pick a niche mm-hmm. and just produce content. Yeah. Um, any speaking opportunity you get mm-hmm. to speak on that, do it. Like even like this, like yeah. I'm here, I'm speaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There might be clips that can come yeah, from yeah. the back of this that might end up on Made You yeah, Think. Yeah. 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 And then someone can then DM me. So I feel like yeah, and it's basically that's how you scale your your influence. It's like different communities starting to understand you that you're the guy for that. How dangerous would you say technology is now to the human labour workforce? How yeah. how good is technology, and how dangerous is it in replacing humans? So digital marketing mm-hmm. is what you're doing. So if you look at the raving scene back in the day, yeah. So back in the day, um, you would pay somebody, or you'd do it yourself. You'd go on the street, you'd hand out flyers, flyers. Mm-hmm. you hand out this, you hand out that. It's fair to say that. Um, some people still hand out flyers, but Lots it's fair to say. Still does. Yeah, but I think it's fair to say that um, the majority of people have now stopped flyering, mm-hmm. and the new form of flyering is digital marketing, where you get a digital flyer, you're no longer printing it, mm-hmm. and you would basically share it amongst social media. Yeah. Now, looking at technology and looking at what it's doing, especially things like AI, for example, yeah. how dangerous is it when forms of digital marketing come into the into the scene, where you know it's replacing forms of maybe human yeah. elements of things or maybe when you look at let's look at Tesco's for instance yeah where for instance you've got a self checkout where yeah. you've got maybe Imagine 20 it. tills now mm-hmm. whereas back in the day it may not have been 20 tills that may have been space for 10 tills mm-hmm. where it was manned by a human who would get paid now that person's no longer getting paid now yes your yes technology is creating jobs for people to do the tech mm-hmm. and people to repair the tech mm-hmm. but what direction do you think we're going in now where yeah. technology is doing its thing or doing what it's, it's doing? How dangerous is it? Or would you say it's not dangerous that people just need to train in these fields to, yeah. get, to get themselves jobs? It's, it's a very good question. I, <coughs> I'm actually torn. So I can't say one way or the other. I can give you the benefits mm-hmm. and, and, and obviously the, 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 the cons. Um, AI, AI is a big problem. So even in my industry mm-hmm. right now, like when I look at the ad platforms, they're now becoming a lot more AI driven. <coughs> So, so people like me, eventually we can go out of business because Facebook, like Meta or whatever platform mm-hmm. can just basically say to a founder, hey, just put your content in here. The AI will figure out mm-hmm. who your customers are. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see that like AI is becoming a lot more involved. So there's a risk even in my industry. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I don't have much concern because I only started doing ads because that's what my, com- my clients were asking for. Mm-hmm. So there's other services that we're starting to provide to people yeah. based yeah. on that. So that's one issue. So there's an element of adaptation that you need to have. Like you need to understand how do you use this AI? How do you pivot? How mm-hmm. do you pivot? Yeah. Now the danger part of that is, to your point, is that 
AI is only based on all, all these technologies, they're only based on the information that you're feeding it. Mm -hmm. So there's been examples where um, artificial intelligence or whatever has been racist okay. to black people or excludes black people mm -hmm. because the data that was fed to it came from a small sect mm -hmm. of society, not, not everybody. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like um, we just need to make sure that this technology needs to be controlled because it, might, it sounded like it could get to a point where it's smarter than, than humans, right? Okay. Uh, what I would say though, at this moment in time... Well, let me, let me pause you. One yeah. second. Smarter than humans. Yeah. It's accumulating a lot of data. Smarter than humans. Yeah. I don't know. But can, I mean, can, okay, well, clearly a computer can be smarter than human because <laughs> if you do, you get a calculator and you do 97, <laughs> nine, seven, 976 times 976, the average human will not know the answer to that, right? Yeah. Correct. But it's a human that's created the calculator. Mm. So what you're saying in <coughs> essence is that AI, no, I'm trying to think whether it, whether you're right in saying that. Yeah. So uh, let, let, let me just break it down how it works. So a lot of it is a calculator smarter than a human. No. No. A calculator isn't. But here's where. Wait, AI, isn't it? No. Not really. But it, it, for for mathematical equations. Yes. Yes. You can argue for it. But then, but then a human has made that calculator. Yeah. 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 So, but, so technically, a calculator isn't smarter than a human, or is yeah. it? But here's the, here's the, here's the danger with AI though, because a lot of this is uh, like generative AI, whatever. It's soft learning. So actually, okay. it starts to learn by itself. Yeah, okay yeah. so it's almost like when it when it begins to prompt itself for its own like cues that's yeah. when it starts that's to kind of, of like thing. like self-aware okay. like like which is a bit of a mad thing so my thing though is that with ai though so i'm not the most clued up on it sure but with ai i've used chat gpt mm -hmm. and i go i know ai is bigger than chat gpt yeah. but i can only use that as my form of ai that i've maybe delved into mm -hmm. now where you say it's smarter than humans are you alluding to the fact that where it's now prompting and now almost sort of rejigging itself, mm -hmm. it's now going to become almost perfect. In yeah, so th that's the risk. This, and by, by the way, I'm no expert as mm -hmm. well. I know as much as the next person, mm -hmm. but the, the, the risk that a lot of the, some of the you know smart people, way smarter than me are mm -hmm. saying that we could get to a point where it's developed a certain level of super intelligence that it knows more than the human there you go. than humans do. So then it can mm -hmm. almost, it can almost know. So let's say there's a switch that it's meant to switch off. Switch this. off. Mm -hmm. It probably would know that that's gonna that humans are gonna switch it off mm -hmm. and then prevent you from being able to do so. That's mm -hmm. kind of like I'll be honest. That's like sci-fi type of stuff. Yeah. And look, villain. Yeah. And we can't say that that's not possible because, mm -hmm. bro, like if you look at ChatGPT, the way it's changed really quickly. Even mm -hmm. now, you can prompt some of it to say, "Draw me a picture of a black man walking down the street," and the next mm -hmm. thing, it draws a picture. Of. So there's that. I and I'm not. I had a client who's one of the people involved in making yeah. chat gpt it's crazy, so yeah he's it's actually crazy. He was from now, here's, Houston, here's, based here here's where i i think i still believe see the things about human i feel like there's a certain level of creativity and it's not all about intelligence by the way that's another thing life isn't all about intelligence because if we assume that everything's about intel not every great thing was created through intelligence mm -hmm. some things were created through just creativity mm -hmm. right like you don't need to be a mathematician to create um you know to take man to space there's other there's other facets of life that are just as important such as art such as music or whatever yeah. and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. even though music right now we see you know drake used ai to, to, to we couldn't tell the difference mm -hmm. so where i think where ai and all these technologies at the moment is it can help you in your current ways of working so for example we work with a lot of videographers yeah okay. and they're scared of ai and i'm like you shouldn't be because now you can edit 10 times faster okay because now there's there's some tools where you just put you you upload the videos and mm -hmm. it chops it up for you already because i bet where's the what's the longest thing for editing for you yes yeah, chopping up the doing, doing clips content. and subtitles so imagine where's yes. now can just after this mm -hmm. uploads it to this thing it chops mm -hmm. it off him already mm -hmm. He can now spend the time that he was going to chop it up to go shoot a next thing with, mm. with Chiz. I, I, and I, I, like, I like AI because it doesn't understand context of certain things. So like we might use like certain slangs and like language and colloquialisms that the AI doesn't understand yet. Yeah. So then it, it does it wrong. Yeah. And then I can say, this is why you pay me to do it and not the AI. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's, That's why I like it. Yeah. 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 But what I'm thinking in that sense, though, it makes Wes more productive. Yeah. But then doesn't it lose? Let's say you had like a young boy who was paying maybe... 10 pounds an hour 10 50 an hour to do that for you yeah now that someone's created an ai app or some kind of tool that you no longer need to pay that young boy 10 pound because this this ai but thing can do you this you say that but i'll probably if if he's smart he'll learn how to use it and then yeah. i'll have to pay him 20 because he can do double the output yeah 
and, and that's and that's the that's so, explain that again so so uh, let's say he can do 10 clips an hour right yeah. and that's that's him just doing it manually essentially mm-hmm. now he learns how to use the ai to up his speed to maybe twice now he can do 20 clips in an hour okay i so pay him twice more. so he can charge me more because he okay, can take then, more and of and my and work and that's what you see the part where you mentioned about the slang and all of that yeah so he can go on the back end and edit those little words yeah so you know like the ai might say something wrong it might type like you know when this caption it might type it wrong but he can go and change yeah. change, change change and the scary thing about the ai thing yeah. as he's changing it the ai, the AI is, is learning. learning so the next time it's going to be more efficient that's the okay. risky part yeah. so i look i don't my thing with us as technology and technology yeah. especially with our, my community our community i think we this, this is amazing that we're having mm-hmm. these conversations because i feel like sometimes we get scaremongered into certain things where we're like okay this is going to take our jobs or whatever mm-hmm. but actually if you if you use it wisely it should unlock opportunities for you to do more interesting things so for example 